People like to use me as a punching bag. Ma'am, are you okay? Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Married to Medicine. This is season eight, episode eleven, and that was the that was the quote of the day. People like to use me as a punching bag. Toya Bush Harris, who used you as a punching bag, sis? Who used you as a punching bag? We've been sitting here, girl, we're up to 11 episodes in this season. And every function has been the same thing. You've came, you've gotten drunk, or you've either come there drunk. You're dragging uninvited guests everywhere you go. And then you storm off and leave after you show your so who's using you as a punching bag? Or are you actually using these girls as a runway to walk all over? Because I don't see anybody using you as a punching bag. And then everything goes back to you being behind the scenes talking shit. You on the internet talking shit. You on the phone talking shit. You back on the tennis court talking shit. So... Where is it that people are using you like a punching bag, sis? Toya, stop it. Anyway, let's talk. First things first, Latoya and Eugene, honey, we see Grimace in the fire and the fry guy. They're sitting there and they're talking about how the kids are back to school and then saying, you know, she's saying the one little boy, Avery, her oldest boy, he doesn't like to be told what to do. Grimace says he gets that from you. And then she say he whine all the goddamn time. He get that from you. I said, oh, well, aren't y'all just a pair? That's cute. <laughs> anyway, I guess. Whatever gets you through the day, honey. Um, and then I'm going to say this. On the parenting side of things. Toya, why are you talking to your children about heavenly? Why? You're sitting there talking to your son like he's one of your girlfriends. And you're making reference to things about Miss Heavenly because it's Miss Heavenly. It ain't even Dr. Heavenly to him. It's Miss Heavenly. You talking to him about this grown woman and the little boy got enough sense. He said, Mommy, that ain't even funny. And it wasn't. You were being unnecessarily shady and crass. And the little boy was like, shit together bitch. again stop it stop it do not bring your children that's a bad bad habit and I've seen it on other as it's going forward because we watch these children grow up and then I've seen on another show and I'm, I'm not going to say what show it is but I've seen where the one of the, the castmates used to do that Talk to her daughters about the other castmates. And then as time went on, the daughter then grew up. And now the daughter is saying crash shit about the other castmates. And then y'all got an ongoing battle going on on social media with this teenage girl who's totally out of order talking about these grown ass women. Stop it now. Just stop it now. You already know where it could go. We got Cecil. The husbands are supposed to be quiet and be seen. The husbands are supposed to be for eye candy. On reality shows, those husbands are only there for eye candy. Truly. They're not supposed to be part of the cast. They're not supposed to be part of the storyline. They're there unless they're like Qua's husband. See, his ass was supposed to be part of the storyline. She quit him. And they got a divorce. That's when you're part of the storyline. But other than that, the husbands are there for us to look at. That's all. The Todds and the Apollos of the world, those are eye candy. That's it. Nobody care what they got to say. 
And then when they say too much, then you end up with a Cecil. Or you end up with a Peter Thomas. The men of reality TV are truly, they're on housewife shows, housewife shows. Those men are there for eye candy. That's all. Because the, art, the audience is truly made up of women and gay men. And, and if you act like you don't know what I'm talking about, you ain't doing it but lying to yourself. And I'm here to clean you up, honey, and let you know the audience is out there who's looking, gay men and women, the husbands are there for eye candy. Nobody cares what they have to say, really. They don't. See how much fun we had with Bolo? He was there. He was strategically placed for us to look at. That's it. Nobody cared what Bolo had to say. Shake that thing. Shake that thing, Bolo. Nobody care what you saying, man. That's why you ain't got no speaking lines. Shake your ass and get on out of here. Period. Cecil talked too much. Eugene talked too much. We love them. You know, I, I'm listen, I'm an avid fan of marriage medicine. I love Dr. G. I love Dr. G. Y'all know back in the day, I love me some Dr. G and Quad. Loved them. But when Dr. G starts showing his ass, is you okay? You ain't supposed to be talking. If you don't shut up, man, and get on, get out of here. You lose. No matter what, you lose. Real Housewives of Atlanta, Mark. Mark. He was cute when we first seen him. And then after that, don't none of us like him. None of us. And I ain't even a Kenya fan. I don't care for Kenya all like that. But what I really don't like is Mark Daly. Got no use for him at all. How dare him treat Kenya the way he treated her. And you know, y'all know I can't stand Kenya half the time. But when it comes to Kenya Moore versus Mark Daly, how freaking dare him. How dare you, Mark Daly? Get out of here. If we got to choose, I choose Kenya. But he just out of order. How dare you? The other little boy for shit that was kicking glass out, we really liked him. But we didn't care what he had to say. We just liked looking at his big old tall goofy ass. But we didn't care what he had to say. What? Chuck. We don't care. Anyway, so I said what I said, period. Now let's move on. End it now, Toya. Keep your kids out of the bullshit. They're just cute. And the kids, we just love the kids. We just want to love on the kids. Everybody love the kids. So we just dare to love on the kids and watch them grow up and say, oh, look. And then whatever they go into, we support it. We support it. The kid, because the kids of reality show, they just by default, we love them all by default. It don't make no, they could be the brattiest brat that there is on television. By default, the viewing audience, we love all of the reality star children. All the reality TV children, we love them all. It doesn't matter whether it's a girl, a boy, whatever their ages are. We love and support them all, and we're all rooting for them. When they go off to school, when they do whatever it is they do, we love the kids by default, and we don't drag the kids. We don't say bad shit about the kid. We don't do that. That just that's just a that's an unsaid rule across the board. Leave the kids alone. The reality you don't drag the reality star kids. You don't do that. You just don't. And if you do. Then the rest of the reviewers come and then we drag you. That's just the way that is. Then you find yourself in a beef, an internet beef. If you drag the kids, their parents will drag you and the rest of the reviewers will drag your raggedy ass. That's just the way it be. That's how it be. <laughs> we all, by default, are rooting for all of the children of all the reality stars. Even if you don't like them, we love the kids. That's just the way that is. That's just... I 
I didn't make the rules. I just work here. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Okay, so Miles and Simone. Simone, you're getting on my nerves. See, here we go with one of our reality kids. Now, he grown. And she's sitting there talking to him about budgeting and paying bills. I get it. I get it. But you're getting on my goddamn nerves, Simone. You're getting on my nerves because I don't like the bad edit that Miles is getting. I don't like it. I don't like it. And I've said that, and I'm going to say it again. Every time they put Miles in a scene, and we got his old grown ass who act like he don't know what's going on, and he ain't doing it by acting, sitting over there looking like his daddy. He, he, don't, he don't know what's going on. He don't know how privileged he is. I don't care. I don't like it. I don't like that bad edit that he's getting. Don't use Miles for your storyline, Simone. Knock it off. I don't like it. I don't like this at all. I don't like it. It's like painting him in this picture like he is just so, I don't know. School didn't work out. Okay. I don't need to see Miles no more until Miles get back on the right track. Then bring Miles back on. But I don't need to see Miles getting a bad at it. I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it. I don't like it. And Simone. I don't like that shit. Moving on. Anila and Lisa. Child, listen. I'm really trying with Anila. Girl, but you're just tacky. That's all it is to it. You, you kind of tacky, girl. I don't know that you're right for this show. Because for you to sit on screen and you're giving, like, posting your prices, for me, it just has a sense of tackiness. It's just tacky. And no. Now you've actually said what you charge to do posts on your Instagram and stuff. Now you can't never make over that. You can't raise it. You can go below it, but you can't raise it because you said it on TV. Tacky ass. You don't sit your ass down somewhere. Sit down. You give me tacky and desperate. I just don't like it. And I don't think you fit in. I, I just, I don't. I just don't think she fits in here. Um, and then that dress you had on over at Lisa's. Lisa, you ought to be ashamed to put her in that dress and have them running them cameras. That dress look horrible. It look horrible. And of course you're in there and it's like, I guess supposedly a sample size or whatever. It looked horrible. It looked horrible. You should have just stopped it at her with the bathing suit and the um, the little cover-up. We could have just stopped there. You know, pretty girl and all. You know? But, mm -mm, that dress looked a mess. It looked terrible. It didn't do anything for your brand and it definitely didn't do anything for her. She looked terrible in that dress. Anyway, moving on. Quad ended up calling while they were there to invite Anila to a party at her house, a girls' night, and Lisa just bogarted herself an invitation. I said, well, at least you did bogart yourself an invitation instead of being a plus one because you've been plus one and your ass off all season. It's a bit much. Anyway, like you're just trying to get to back into the social circle. Desperate. Anyhow, so that was that, and I was like, Quad, what are you doing? You're inviting Lisa to your house? Last time y'all was together back in the day, she, and then they had her, you know, Andy in the shady flashback. They show her, what about your lesbian relationship, bitch? And she throws water all over your face. Now you're inviting her to your house to throw water in your face. Okay, if you think that's smart, girl, go ahead. Honey. And you know you love expensive liquor. So you're inviting her to your to your place to throw expensive liquor in your face. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Good thing I'm going to let you slide because you're sitting over here, girl, and I'm still on the train that you are running the show, this thing. But yeah, you know I'm going to tap you on your goddamn wrist. Guest of the show? I think not. Again, more exposure than people on the show. Y'all need to cut this bullshit out and stick her ass back on the opening credits, child. She is a cast mate. Call it what you like. Stop with the shade. Anyway, moving on. Scott and Contessa. Child, okay. This is getting old, too. 
This storyline's getting old. Either y'all going to shit or y'all going to get off the pot. Is the marriage good or is the marriage bad? If we're going to keep on bringing it up about the marriage, then either y'all need to be bringing up and showing that you're trying to fix it or that you ain't fixing it. But just keep bringing it up and, and, and dancing around it. It's getting old. It's getting old and it's getting stale. And girl, stop fussing at that man while he's stabbing you in your damn forehead with a needle. Girl, are you okay? You crazy? He's stabbing you all around your forehead and you aggravating him. Anyway, now Nate still talking about therapy. He don't want to go, child. He don't want to go. Okay, that's stale. We get it. He don't want to go. So what you going to do? What's next? Come on, y'all. Anyway, moving on. Jackie and Simone. They over, they back to doing their, their girlfriend thing. They getting dressed over at Jackie's house and everything. I don't know, are y'all cool enough for you to be borrowing stuff? Again, Simone, I don't think y'all are. I don't think y'all cool enough for you to be borrowing purses and shoes yet. But anyway, I'm just poking and teasing. But they're talking about Toya and uh, Simone riding this little train of, you know, why is the Toya feels like she's being dogged out? By heavenly and quad. And I was noticing right away, I said, Simone, you on the, uh, the Toya train, huh? And don't get yourself in trouble. Don't get yourself in trouble because Toya out of order. Just so, just so you know, Simone, don't fall out with the people that you're trying to make up with fooling with Toya because Toya out of order. Just so you know. Anyway, um, they flash over to Toya's house. Toya over there going through her stuff, getting dressed. So, oh, I don't want to waste this outfit going on over her house instead of the other. And you see how my face is? Right here. This is right here. If that's your attitude before you go to a function, guess what you need to do? Not go. Especially when you're talking about at a person's house. If you're planning on going to an event at a person's house and your face as you're getting dressed, you ain't even getting dressed. You're pulling out your outfit to wear and you're giving. I promise you, you don't need to go. You don't even need to go. Period. And that's that. Let's go on over to Quad's house. Of course, Quad is doing Quad, so of course she's going way over the top with this. Her and her little chef, he's cute, little chef, and they getting things together. She putting up decorations with these heels on. I said, girl, you just wanted us to see them shoes, and they was bad, bitch. They was bad. I was like, girl, yes. It was a cute little pair of shoes, honey. I said, now y'all, did y'all catch it, honey? Look at these, honey. And she'd go up on the ladder, honey. So we can see the shoes. I said, yes, Miss Quad, honey. Those shoes were cute. But that's, that's all it was. That was a shoe commercial. <laughs> that was a shoe commercial. That was strategic placement done by Quad Webb, buddy. <laughs> I said, come on through, girl. Oh, come on, sponsorship. Anyway, I hope you got a check or somebody got a check because that was truly a shoe commercial. Um, but we go over there and they get everything together. Child, that damn heavily, heavily there. Heavily being heavily. She said, yeah, you know. Girl, I really like Anita. <laughs> heavily, you a messy ass. Who the fuck is Anita? <laughs> That's it. You took us right back to Contessa, honey. Who is Anita? <laughs> You know damn well her name ain't no damn Anita. They gonna say, girl, her name is not Anita. It's Anila, girl. She gonna say, oh, well, the bitch is new. I can't. You, uh, who expect me to remember the new bitch, honey? <laughs> you so damn shady. Anyway, so they get getting there and everything's going good and 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 you know everything's good. Everybody looks really nice. They do. Everybody looks really cute and. Lisa comes. Everybody was shocked to see Lisa. I said, girl, move the glasses back, honey. Where's the expensive liquor, honey? Quad, you got a shield on, girl? I want to throw that expensive liquor in your face down there to your house, honey. 
and you have to pull out your expensive mop and broom and clean it up, honey. So, girl, be careful. Anyway, the shade has been thrown, honey. It's a little shade for you, Miss Quad, honey. I don't want you to have to pull out your expensive broom and mop honey, and clean up, honey, after she throw liquor in your face in your own house now. Careful. Anyway, late as usual, here come damn Toya, and she bringing this goddamn pretzel, the pretzel stick chick, in here with her. Not a pretzel, they're thinner. Pretzel, honey, a pretzel stick heifer in there with that old carry Well, here she come in there with her old ass. I said, here she come, honey. I said, Lord, and right away, honey, here and her and Quad get to going at it a little bit. I said, oh, girl, I didn't know you were coming because I didn't, um, I said, get her, get her, girl, get her, honey. You're right. I didn't invite you. Here come Toya. Tacky, tacky Toya again, bringing a plus one that you know the people don't do them. I said, girl, a mess, honey. And she brought her in there. She gonna say, oh, yeah, no, you know, we didn't get off to a good start. No, y'all did not. We got Shady Andy's flashbacks, naturally. Whatever. And then Carrie gonna say, it's no thing, Quad. Let's, we'll just start over and things will be fine. Quad's like, yeah, I guess, girl, you're here now. I said, girl, she's so shady, honey. I love it, honey. Get her. Get her, honey. Get her. So then she saw, um, Carrie told her, she said, girl, you know, this home is nice. You have a nice home, Quad. See, I bought one of these, a home just like this, as an investment property. Only difference is yours has an elevator. I said, oh, this bitch. And Quad said, yeah, girl, that's like a $30,000 difference. I said, come through, Quad Addy, with yourself, Addy. Told her, girl, don't you try. Don't try to do me, bitch. I was like, child, make me a shady, Addy. That's my kind of shade, Addy. That's a $30,000 difference. Uh-huh. I said, girl, get her, Addy. Anyway. So, shortly after that, next thing you know, here go Quad and Toya. Get to going at it, honey. And it's because heavily. You started it, Heavenly, you messy ass heifer. You started it. Heavenly just threw that girl. Well, I, I can't keep my mouth closed. We know. What is it, Heavenly? Uh, Toya was talking shit, girl, called your house, said this was old, old, uh, old nothing ass apartment or old petty ass apartment or something. I said, oh. So they get to arguing back and forth. Quad, why are you screaming and yelling? Why are you screaming and yelling? She's standing in there in the midst of your four floor place with the elevator in it. She knows it's not an apartment. At least it would be an apartment building. It's not an apartment. And she knows it. So why are you yelling, honey? You have no reason to yell. You didn't have to yell. But you got in your feelings because how dare she? How dare she? But this is what she does. This is what y'all doing. And then she, she had the nerve to say, when I got on there, are you going to yell at me? When I got on Cecil's live, I was tipsy. Stop getting drunk, bitch. Stop getting drunk and talking shit. So I'm not giving Toya a pass. You were on a live. You talked about her living arrangements. She, in turn, talked about your living arrangements. So where is it that you were being treated like a bunch of bag? Stop talking shit. You and Anila ain't getting along because you talked about Anila and her cheap, tacky ass. Anila, stop being cheap and tacky. But Toya, why are you talking about her to the people in the neighborhood? You supposed to be her friend. You violated her. So Anila, you call Anila fake. No, you're the one that's fake. You're the one that's fake, Toya, Bush Harris. You're the one that's fake. And when Quad called you a mannequin, it was true. Stand the fuck up in the corner and pose, bitch, because you fake. She told the truth. That was true. 
what she said about you. It was true. Then when you had that stuff to say about Jackie, that was totally uncalled for. When you attack Jackie, you'll tell her, you just sit back and don't say that. What is she supposed to say? Ain't nobody doing nothing to Jackie. Jackie done had two rough seasons. Jackie don't want no more problems. She lost her husband and, and, and got her husband back in one season. She lost her best friend in another season. She had two rough seasons. She stood back shutting her goddamn mouth, which is what she should be doing. Ain't nobody did nothing to Jackie. Jackie ain't supposed to be saying that. Why she need to insert herself? Whenever she do insert herself, she say, you always taking the high road. So she shut the hell up. You just are miserable about something that ain't came up on this show yet. I don't know what it is because I don't follow your ass through social media. But there is something lurking out there that is going on with you that's got you so goddamn miserable. And you are taking it out on these ladies. So you're deflecting and you're trying to give it back to them. But no, no one's using you as a punching bag, sweetheart. You are using them as a runway and walking all over these ladies. And it doesn't make any sense. Simone, if you don't sit your ass down. I don't know if you sniffed all that Patron coming off of her and your ass is drunk. But you riding the Toya train and you're going to get run over. You're going to get run over by the caboose if you don't sit down and shut your ass up. Hush. Hush. She wrong. Period. Hush. Anyway, and now here we go. You fussing about Anila calling her fake because she's angry with you. Now, Anila basically has traded you in. She went to the winning side. I don't blame her. She went over where the ladies treat her nice. Quad treats her nice. Heavily even start treating her nice. Everybody treat her nice. You standing around and with y'all friends, with y'all's nose up highbrow friends talking about the girl. Talking about she can't pay her bills. No, you're the one that's fake, sweetie. It's you. You're the one that's fake. But fake was really with you. You brought fake in the door with you. You had all of that going on. You ended up crying and leaving like you've done at all the other functions. You're angry and you're leaving. You didn't notice that the bitch that you brought with you wasn't with you when you left. You didn't notice that when your Uber showed up to take you home, that you were in the Uber by yourself. I'll just leave that right there. Carrie Wells was still at the party that she wasn't invited to. Well, after you were gone, now I'm leaving. Dummy.